Good evening, great to see you all out tonight. That was a different group than what you're normally seeing, used to seeing up here. But let's uh, sing together, 575, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Obviously you can't sing this song standing, sitting down, so let's stand up as we sing 575, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead, till every foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. On the third, stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you, ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor, each piece put on with prayer. Where duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next the victor song. To him that overcometh, a crown of life shall be. He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. You may be seated. Well, good evening. It's good to see each of you here this evening. Glad you could be out again for Maranatha night number two. There we go. That's, <laughs> it's a joy to have these wandering souls here and they uh, kind of got lost and ended up right here in Roscoe, and we're grateful for it, so that'll be a blessing. Glad for them to be here tonight. I'm sure they'll say something about themselves and so forth. Really, Brother Herbster, uh, he can't get that evangelism uh, heart out of, his, out of his spirit, and that's okay. That's what God's called him to do, and he's out representing the school and preaching, and we appreciate that. We'll look forward to the preaching of God's Word tonight as well. Thank you, young people, for coming and ministering to hearts and song. We appreciate that. That's a real blessing. Just a couple quick things, and then I'll turn it over to them after we have a word of prayer. Uh, don't forget, next Sunday night, church workers uh, ministry meeting, our normal uh, annual meeting to cover all the policies and procedures and safeguards and all that kind of stuff. Again, teenagers, uh, you're involved in VBS this summer. We'd love for you to be a part of that uh, program as well next Sunday night afterwards. Uh, had a wonderful time with the claps. They wanted to, again, uh, share with you. They appreciate your love, your care. Uh, they, they feel like our church engages well with them, and that's a blessing. Several of you I know write consistently with them. Thank you for doing that. That's a huge encouragement and blessing to them. So be praying. We remember we want to pray specifically that they will be allowed to get back into Palau uh, come June. All right. So no flights have been going back. They, they're hoping the first flight actually goes back in April. Um, so there's a lot of paperwork for them as Americans because we are... We're bad, all right, <laughs> um, with all the COVID here. And so be praying that the Lord would orchestrate that. And he, I appreciate his sweet spirit about it. And let's see. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the guy. It starts with Ru. Ruina. Ruin. Ruate. There you go. That's right. Thank you. Thank you for helping me. So let's pray praying for Ruate, um, that the Lord would use him. I was, to me, that was probably one of the most precious moments this morning in Sunday school was hearing his testimony um, as God has kind of thrust him into the leadership of the church there, and God is using him. And what I, I appreciate his humble spirit, too. It was very evident he's leaning on the Lord and God's blessing. So the, the behind-the-scenes story is that, that Brother uh, at Clapp is regularly in conversation, communication with him. They talk on the phone once a week, texting all the time. So that's a real blessing to see that, so continue to be praying for them as well. And then this Saturday, all right, here we go. Uh, with God's grace and God's help, and hopefully we won't get too many tomatoes thrown at us, we're going to start going out door-to-door -door calling again. Um, the intention is on Saturday morning, so 10.30, if you want to join us here, we will this Saturday essentially just be putting flyers in the door looking for 
anybody that's out on the street that wants to talk to us, all right? That's where we're starting with the back to door to door calling. So looking forward to it. And then we'll have flyers for our revival meetings, which are just in two weeks from today. Two weeks from today, uh, Brother Savinsky will be with us. So there are flyers back on the, on the welcome table. Make sure you pick that up uh, and be inviting your neighbors and friends and families and enemies and coworkers and all those things, please. Um, we'll look forward to just a wonderful week. But plan on Saturday morning, 1030. Um, if you have any questions about that, what to wear, all those kinds of things, uh, you know, what, what do we do, who you get partnered with, all that kind of stuff, please catch me afterwards. I'll be happy to just walk that through. Um, this is, in my opinion, a pretty historic moment again for us as a church family uh, to try to get out there uh, on purpose, uh, visiting po people, cold, cold calls, all right, again, but what a joy. So plan on that Saturday morning. And, and those of you that aren't with us on Saturday morning, would you please pray? Uh, whether it's Friday night, Saturday morning when you get up, uh, just pray that the Lord will just watch over and give us some unique opportunities uh, to share the gospel, even even when COVID's still kind of around, all right? That the Lord would just watch over all of that and be glorified in it. So we'll look forward to that. Okay, let's have a word of prayer, and we'll turn it over to the young people to give us some more songs. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness to us. Uh, we delight in your special blessings to us, and we even think of the team here tonight, uh, Brother Herbst are coming. We see that as a gift from you, and we rejoice in it. I pray that our hearts would be again ministered to well in song, that we would learn and worship, uh, learn of you and worship you well. And then as we hear the preaching of your word, may our hearts be tender and open. Lord, uh, and even personally, I realize that you are on purpose giving me God's word tonight as the pastor. So help me to have ears to hear, a heart to receive. Help me to grow in Christ tonight. And may all of us do that as well. Lord, thank you for all the folks that are with us, even some of our guests tonight. We rejoice in that. May we be a blessing to them. And then, Lord, may we just be encouraged to serve you faithfully this week. Do watch over our church family. Thank you for several that were out this morning that back out from surgery, from, from health issues. We're grateful for that. Continue to watch over them. Bless Saturday in particular as we strive to again share the gospel with our neighbors. Uh, Lord, use us in ways that we can't even understand. May we just be a sweet testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ as we go out. We do ask for your hand of blessing as we look ahead to the revival meetings. May that be a source of spiritual strengthening for us, a time of spiritual growth. Lord, we would pray that you might allow us to see someone to come to know Christ as their Savior even that week. Help us to be diligent as a church family to be praying now and as well to be inviting. Bless tonight now. In your name we pray. Amen. It's good to have Brother Herpser here. Just a quick word of, of introduction again. He's been here a couple times already. He traveled with Tonal, has preached for us. He is the dean of the seminary, so we call him Dean Herpster. There we go. And uh, you don't salute a dean, you just ask for his autograph. No, <laughs> and ask, ask for a tuition rebate. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Anyways, appreciate his heart and passion for the ministry. Um, that has been a, just a wonderful joy to the work at Maranatha, as, as you probably understand and know. And his vision to continue to keep Maranatha faithful to the Lord and to his word. Folks, we need that. We're in a day and age where Christianity seems to be running headlong away from truth and righteousness. I'm grateful for a school and for the dean of the seminary that's willing to say we're striving with all of our heart to be faithful to the Lord, to his word, produce young people that will go out and serve the Lord faithfully in, in uh, God's mission field. So we're grateful for that. So you all come. Pastor, thank you so much for the privilege of serving with you at this last minute notice. And we know we can do that with certain people. And, of course, your pastor is not only a tremendous man of God and pastor, but he is one of our faithful board members, graduate as well. And we know that there's many graduates here. They could Several of these uh, former students and students could join us if they wanted to. But we're very, very thankful that your church uh, loves Maranatha. And I knew that he would tell me the truth. If, if it was okay, it was fine. I, I, I told him, like, on Friday, I think. That, or maybe even Saturday, I can't remember. Was it Thursday? Okay, Thursday that we were passing through. We've already had two services today down in Shannon, and I'm so thankful for the privilege. We're passing right by your church. It's right by the interstate, right? So we know where you are. And, of course, so many friends here. Um, appreciate Caleb Gillespie as well, a uh, recent graduate. And of course, I uh, saw Micah Gillespie playing the organ. That was interesting, and, and great to see him over there. And great to have our students, uh, uh, now our present students that are here traveling with me today. And I'm thankful for their sacrifice to serve the Lord this way. Psalm 100 says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with what? Gladness. 
So we're going to begin this, uh, this, these two songs with a wonderful song that really reminds us that when we serve God, there ought to be joy. That joy should show up on our face, but it should most of all be in our heart and in our lives as we serve the Lord with joy. So we know our lives should be filled with joy, and yet the truth is, life is filled also with pain and sorrow. That's the reality of life, and the scripture reminds us that all of us go through diverse trials, and maybe you're facing something that would steal your joy, and yet joy is not the absence of conflict. Joy is knowing in whom you have believed, and trusting in God. There is a wonderful passage of scripture that we will sing from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, where it says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Verse 11 says, he hath made everything beautiful in his time. Verse 14 says, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Truly, God makes all things beautiful in his time.
right along with what they just sang and the fact that we trust in Christ for our joy. 477 in your hymn book, He Keeps Me Singing. Even during the trials, during the tribulations, we can rely on Christ for our joy, for our strength to keep on going. Let's stand one more time together. We'll sing 1, 2, and 5 this evening. 477 in your hymn book. There's within my heart a melody Jesus whispers sweet and low I am with thee, peace be still, in all of life's ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweet as name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife, Discord filled my heart with shame. Jesus swept across the broken strings, slurred the stumbling swords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. On the last Soon he's coming back to welcome me, far beyond the starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown, I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweet as name I know. Since we uh, gave last week already in a major offering for Maranatha, we're not doing anything special, special tonight. We're helping cover their costs and so forth. So, but if you want to give towards Maranatha, obviously throw it in the gift box. Uh, we'll mark it and make sure it gets up there. If you want to give to each of the kids, just talk to them afterwards and hand them a $20 bill or whatever. They, wouldn't, they, will, they won't say no, all right? You won't say no. You just may. <laughs> Anyways, we've got a sweet family here. Anyway, um, so normal offering other than that, of course. Um, and then we walkers tonight, all right? We walkers are going to sing after the offertory. They're going to sing a couple more, a couple more songs, and then as Brother Herbster gets up, you quietly walk out and go back to because he's going to be a long preacher. Anyways, no. <laughs> anyways, you know about that around here. Anyway, uh, so anyways, kids, you just step out as he comes to preach. He'll probably, I don't know, be moving from there or there. You just quietly slip out. We walker uh, leaders, thank you so much for that, and enjoy your time back there. Let's have a word of prayer. Thank the Lord for his goodness to us. Father, thank you so much for what we've already been ministered to in song. Uh, Lord, thank you for the work of God that's going on here at our home church and how you've helped and blessed and directed and met our needs in every way. Continue to do that. Thank you for God's people who demonstrate their love for you so often as they generously give. 
Lord, bless the work at Maranatha. Bless Brother Herbster in his role. Uh, help these young people that are coming to that time of semester where lots of things are coming due. They need to get all their work done. Give them strength. Give them focus. Uh, give them joy in the midst of all the hard work of school too. And Lord, at the end of the day, help them to learn to be godly young people that will go out and serve you with their life. Uh, we would pray that for each of these young people. We don't know all of them personally, but we want God's best for them. May they pursue it with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength as well. Lord, may our hearts be again ministered to in song, and may our hearts be prepared to hear your word well in your name. So just before we sing our next song, I'd like for every, uh, you to know who our students are and where they're from and what they're studying. So if, uh, if you can uh, just bear with us a little bit, and we'll start on this side and go around so you can see uh, the kind of variety that we have and the different places that they're from and the different things that they're studying. And uh, then I'll come back and, and tell you what song we're going to sing next. Uh, so we'll start right here. I'm from Watertown. 
Uh, my name is Jamin Beachel. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm a sophomore exercise science major. Hi, I'm Alicia Beachel. I am also from Raleigh, North Carolina. She is sibling. <laughs> um, I am a music education major and I'm a senior. I am Madison Brewster. I'm from Watertown, Wisconsin, and I'm a freshman in elementary education major. I'm Claire Green. I'm from Asheboro, North Carolina, and I'm a sophomore elementary education major. I'm Megan Herbster. I'm from Watertown as well, and I'm a sophomore nursing major. Hi, I'm Michaela Herbster. I'm from Ringgold, Louisiana, and I am a sophomore social studies education major. Hi, my name is Micah Herbster. I'm also from Ringgold, Louisiana, and I am a senior pastoral uh, studies major and also working on my seminary degree at Maranatha. Hi, I'm Ben Schmitz. I'm from Denver, Colorado, and I'm a senior digital media marketing major. Yes, I'm aware there are five Herbsters. I, I, I'm aware of that. I see some of you kind of, oh, oh, they're not all mine, okay, I promise you. We, oh, Charity, yeah, we, oh, sorry, our pianist. And by the way, uh, the, the, just before she introduces herself, the song that we did at the very beginning of the service was composed by Charity. And of course, you see her talent on the piano as well. But you know her name now, but she can tell you. <laughs> So we want to sing a song that you know well, but the, a new tune to this great hymn text. Of course, you've sung, It Is Well With My Soul.
we hope that it is well with your soul. But if it is not well with your soul, there's only one person you should run to, and that is our great God. The next song we'll sing before the message is a new arrangement of the great hymn text, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. And you'll notice in the song many, uh, many, many illustrations from the wandering in the wilderness. You'll hear about the bread. You'll hear about the pillar and the cloud. And you'll he hear about the Jordan River and the deliverance that God can bring. And there's a lot of analogies to our lives as well. So if it's not well with your soul, you need to run to God and he will guide you all the way across the Jordan into the promised land. Well, I hope these songs have been encouragement to you tonight. Love that tune, that new tune, To Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Really helps us to recognize that we are pilgrims, are we not? We're pilgrims in this world, and God is leading us. And praise the Lord, he's leading us to a better place. And whatever you are facing right now in your life, this is all temporal. I'm so thankful that we know where eternity will be. We know who our God is, and we know we will be with him forever. I can hardly get through that song without just uh, getting emotional and just clinging on to the greatness and the guiding power of our great God. 
Would you turn with me in your Bibles tonight to Proverbs chapter 2? Proverbs chapter 2. I just heard that you are having Jerry Savinsky, and I'm going to prepare you well because Jerry Savinsky is one of my dear friends, and he preaches almost exclusively 22 to 25 minutes long, which means tonight I'm going to just uh, go ahead and preach a short message so that you're warmed up for the evangelistic meeting, and you can tell Brother Savinsky I set him up very well, Pastor, so make sure you pass that to him. I've known him for many, many years, and when I began an evangelist, evangelistic ministry years ago, he became a dear friend of mine. He knew me when I was a teenager, and I'm so thankful for the, the many years of faithful preaching that uh, Jerry Savinsky has given. Of course, uh, you may not know this, but he has three sons who are also in the ministry, and uh, a daughter who I believe is married to a pastor as well, and so his family speaks volumes of the consistency of what he preaches. And I, I just want to encourage you, you ought to be faithful. You don't have to worry about long-winded evangelists with Jerry Savinsky, okay? So make sure you're faithful to come to the services when he comes in just a couple weeks. I'm really excited about that. So thankful again, Pastor, for the privilege of serving with you. So many uh, friends here in the auditorium. Great to see so many of you here tonight, and I appreciate so much the privilege to serve at Maranatha Baptist University. Thankful that last week you also had a group uh, here singing, the soccer team. What a wonderful blessing that is to see those guys, those athletes that are singing praises to the Lord. I'm thankful that you also had the privilege of having Dr. Davis here. And as some of you maybe had not met him, and I'm so thankful for his faithfulness and ministry. And he's a dear friend of mine as well. Of course, we are serving together there at the university. And uh, we just appreciate so much your church. And uh, I would love to go on and on, but I need to get a Jerry Savinsky message in. So uh, let's look to the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 2. Look what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. I want you to glance over to chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4. Of course you know we're in one of the wisdom books of the Old Testament. Lots of talk about this subject. Chapter 4, verse 5. Get wisdom. Get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. There are many mountains to climb in our spiritual lives. For some people... Sharing the gospel, knocking on somebody's door, as Pastor has already mentioned, starting that up. For some people, evangelism like that is a serious mountain to climb, and they're not really climbing it very well. For some people, it's the mountain of holiness, striving to be separate and distinct from the world, and we all as believers should be striving to that peak and to that summit of holiness. We could go on and talk about spiritual duties and accomplishing things for the Lord within a local church context. But according to this passage that we just read in, in Proverbs chapter 4, we find that there is a Mount Everest in our spiritual lives. There is a summit that every Christian should be climbing. And it says wisdom is the principal thing. Interesting that the word principal comes from a Hebrew root which means the summit. And I want to say to all of us tonight that it is God's desire that we would be climbing the mountain and going to the summit of biblical wisdom. He says in this passage, get wisdom. In order for us to get wisdom, first of all, we need to know what it is. What is wisdom? Of course, we know it is not just intellectual knowledge. I work at an educational institution, and I know we are giving a lot of information, but giving information and, and being smart and maybe even getting straight A's does not mean somebody is spiritually wise. The Bible actually tells us that the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. There are people who have all kinds of 
degrees. They may have several doctor's degrees, and yet they cannot claim that they are spiritually wise. Wisdom is not just intellectual knowledge. Wisdom is a lot deeper than that. Spiritual wisdom is something that we need to define. If we're going to get it, we need to know what it is. One of the best ways to define an Old Testament word is to look at the usage of the word. Usage defines meaning. In Exodus chapter 36, verses 1 through 4, the Bible describes a people who were building the tabernacle, building the temple of God, and he describes them under inspiration as wise. He uses the word in a totally secular sense to describe people who were experts at a particular trade. In Psalm 107, verse 27, the exact same Hebrew word is used to describe someone who was a master at navigation on the water. It literally says they came to their wit's end. Literally, the end of their wisdom. In Isaiah 10, verse 13, the Bible word wisdom, the Hebrew word wisdom, is used to describe someone who has a skill in military strategy. And I hope that you can reference those and maybe do a study, not only in those passages, but throughout the Old Testament of that word for wisdom, which is many times used to describe people who were skillful at what they were doing. If I was, I was going to define the word in one word, wisdom is skill. If you were excellent at your trade, you would be called a wise craftsman, a wise doctor, a wise carpenter, if you were an expert at what you were doing. So when we come to the wisdom books, and over and over we're told to get wisdom, what is God saying? God is saying that we should be skillful, and we should master the art of living for God. We should be skillful at making wise, good, discerning decisions. Maybe I could put it in a simple definition. Wisdom is the skill or ability to make right choices in accordance with God's word and God's way. With this prerequisite, the beginning of wisdom is what? The fear of the Lord. No one even hopes to have wisdom unless they have a proper respect of God. Wisdom is the skill or ability to make right choices. Isn't it true? There are people who are Skillful in many areas, but they don't know how to make simple Bible decisions. Wisdom is the principal thing. You know, this should be the goal for our personal lives. This should be the goal for our training of young people and our own children and, and even in Christian education. It's not that they would just have information, but they would be able to take the information and even the Bible truths and make good decisions, wise decisions throughout their life. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. All right, so wisdom is the skill to make good decisions. Now, after we talk about the definition of wisdom, I think it's important that we talk about the value of wisdom. The value of wisdom. And the Bible speaks to this in many different places. Would you turn with me quickly to the book of Job, chapter 28. Job, chapter 28. There's no way we can cover all the verses as we have a short time here tonight. But I want you to notice in this wisdom book, which, by the way, the book of Job helps us to make wise decisions, discerning decisions, skillful decisions when we don't understand what God is doing. This is why the book of Job is so powerful, because Job had a really bad day. If you think you had a bad day, it's nothing like Job's. And so the book of Job helps us, and God has been gracious to us to give us this wonderful book that helps us to see there's bigger things going on when it, when it looks like we're troubled. When, when, things don't, when things don't make sense to us, that God has a plan. And so it helps us to be skillful in our responses to people and our responses in those trials. But in Job chapter 28, verse 12, we see a passage of Scripture about the value of wisdom. Look at Job 28, verse 12. But where shall wisdom be found, and where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. The depth saith, it is not in me, and the sea saith, it is not with me. It cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. 
The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Whence then cometh wisdom, and where is the place of understanding? Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living, and kept close from the fowls of the air. Notice verse 28 at the end of the chapter. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. So here we find a passage where he walks around the culture and he, and he talks about all of the valuable possessions. He names the precious stones. He names the gold and silver. He names things that are valuable and precious to people. And in essence, he's saying nothing compares to the skill of making good decisions according to God's will and God's word. And just to show you that this is a, this is a Bible truth throughout the wisdom literature, let's turn to Proverbs chapter 3. And we will primarily stay in the book of Proverbs from here on out. And the book of Proverbs, of course, is a wisdom book full of these short, simple, pithy statements by the wisest man ever to live. And it reminds us from Solomon himself, he reminds us that wisdom is truly valuable in the principal thing. And as we read some of these verses, here's the point. We ought to value what God values. We ought to value what God values. And you know what God values? He values the, the skill or ability to make good decisions according to God's word and God's way. Proverbs 3, verse 13, notice what the Bible says. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it, that's wisdom, is better than the merchandise of silver. It's better than silver. It's better than the gain of fine gold. Verse 15, she is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. This is an amazing statement. If I were to ask you tonight, what do you desire? What is valuable to you? What would you love to have as a part of your life? He says, anything your heart could ever desire does not compare to what God says is the most valued possession. It's better than gold. It's better than silver. He repeats himself in chapter 8. Just look there quickly. Proverbs chapter 8, starting in verse 10. And any time an Old Testament writer would repeat himself, it was to emphasize the point. And this is almost a direct quote. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 10. Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared unto it. So we spend a lot of time becoming skillful in a lot of areas. We, we spend a lot of time on uh, education. We spend a lot of time on hands-on type work. And people want to master their trade and be skillful in their work. And what I'm saying is we as believers must also master the art of living for God. We need to know the Bible well enough to make good, skillful decisions in every area of life. And I think it's Time for us as believers that we would value what God values. How much time are you spending on this skill? The ability to make good decisions. Now, turn back to Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. And let's notice that Proverbs chapter 2, which I read already in the service, helps us to answer this question. Now that we know what wisdom is, the skill or ability to make good decisions in every area of life with the prerequisite of fearing God, now that we know the value, that it is the the highest possession, it is truly the principal thing, the obvious question is, how can we have it? How can we get this wisdom? Well, Proverbs chapter 2 gives us three ways that we can have this wisdom. Notice what it says again. First of all, we get God's wisdom by receiving His word receiving his word. If you're here tonight and you have never personally trusted in Jesus Christ, I want to remind you that Jesus Christ is literally wisdom in the flesh, wisdom incarnate. He made every decision perfectly because he never did anything wrong. And he is the word, John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. And so receiving the word, though that's not the context here in Proverbs, but receiving the word does mean that you receive Jesus who is the living word. If you're here without Christ, I just plead with you, come to Christ, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's really impossible to be wise without salvation in Christ alone. But for those of us that are believers, notice it says receive God's word. This word receive means to accept it, to carry it away, 
to enfold it, to bring it as your very own possession. As the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 2, keep my commandments and live in, the law, in, thy, in my law as the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart, say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. A wise man will receive commandments. Proverbs 10, verse 8. Now surely you know that not everybody that hears the word is really receiving it. And actually, even here tonight, there might be someone where the the message is going in and out, is in one ear and out the other, and we're really not becoming doers of the word, we're just hearers only. It is possible to be in church and to hear the preaching and not actually be receiving it. And the Bible says the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. It's a very, very dangerous place to be if you are continually coming to church, but you're really not accepting it by faith and by belief and proving it in your life. And so we receive God's word obviously by listening, but most importantly by living. We listen to God, incline your ear, verse 2 says, and we, uh, we live for God, apply your heart. I love that word. The word apply means to stretch. And typically this is the way we are as believers. We, we don't mind using the Bible to touch certain areas of our life, but we don't want the Bible to touch every area of our life. And if the preacher goes in a certain direction, it's like, no, don't talk about that. Don't, don't preach about that. No, we should want the Bible to be stretched in every area of our life. And the principles of God's word should touch every area of our life as we live for the Lord. We apply our hearts and apply it to our lives. So wisdom cannot be a part of our life if we do not receive his words. Folks, his words are given to us in the Bible, which is why we're faithful to church, which is why we read our Bibles, why we memorize, why we meditate on God's word, because there is no way to have the principal thing apart from the Bible. You must have the word of God. Wisdom comes when we receive his words. There's a second way that we get wisdom. Notice what it says in verse 3. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding. So not only do we receive his word, but secondly, we request. We request for his wisdom. Listen, when you want something, you go to the source. When you want wisdom, you go to the source. Who is the source of wisdom? Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding, the Bible says. God is the source of wisdom. And so we run to him and we ask him for his wisdom. And probably the greatest example is Solomon himself. When, when God came to him and said, I would give you uh, whatever you need for the kingdom in 2 Chronicles 1. Then, then Solomon did not ask for riches. He, he understood the value. He asked for wisdom and God granted his request. James 1 verse 5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Can I ask tonight, is there anybody in this room that is perfectly skillful? Or could we all say that we lack, we lack wisdom? Then I ask you, when was the last time you got on your knees or you bowed your head and you said, God, I need your help. I need your wisdom to make a skillful decision in this area. I'm sure I'm talking to some people here tonight, and maybe you're facing something in your family or something in your life or something uh, in a relationship that you just don't know where to turn. You don't know what decision to make. You know what? God is able to give you wisdom. God is able to give you discernment, to open the Bible and to give you principles and even pictures and, and illustrations of maybe how you should handle that situation. And there's a lot of foolishness going on, but we ought to be praying for God to give us wisdom. The skill to make right decisions. When we need wisdom, we run to the source. But folks, the reality is, it's not just that we're not praying for wisdom. Many Christians aren't praying at all. We're not praying much at all. And one of the prayers that we ought to be praying regularly is, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle this. Your word is not perfectly clear. I need your help. I need your instruction. Give me your wisdom. And you know what? The Bible says in James that he gives to us liberally. He gives to us freely his wisdom. Maybe tonight you ought to be praying, God, give me that wisdom. So first of all, we receive God's word. The skill or ability to make good decisions comes as we receive it. 
It comes as we request for it. But notice there's a third way that we get it. I love this. We reach out for his wealth. Number three, we reach out for his wealth. So we can receive it from somebody who's teaching it or even from the Bible itself. Oh, we can request for it, but hold on. We can seek and search for it ourselves. And every one of us can become a student of the Bible. The answers are in the Word of God. The problem is not with the Bible. The problem is with us. We're apathetic and sometimes lazy. And frankly, we're a little bit shallow in maybe our Bible study sometimes. And we're, instead, of, instead of looking for just one verse, we ought to be really reading across the Bible and seeing really the picture and the overall message that God is trying to present to us. And it's important that we dig down deep and we seek and search. Notice verse 4. If thou seekest her and searchest for her as for hid treasures. Listen, I believe God can give us wisdom when we seek and when we search in his word. Many years ago, I went to Bible college. I trained and got a Bible degree for four years. After Bible college, I went and I got a Master of Divinity degree. And that took me a, a lot of time. And I'm continuing to learn. I'm continuing to grow. And you know what? I've been a Bible student for many, many years. And now I'm actually training Bible students uh, there at Maranatha Baptist University. And you know what? Training, training in the Bible teaches you that you really need to do more training. I have no idea why any seminary student would ever get proud because what I learned in seminary is what I didn't know. And I would walk out of classes just shaking my head like, I can't believe I've been studying for all these years. I never heard that. I have never heard that before. And that literally happened while I was in seminary. And I think seminary should humble you, not make you proud, and not make you think you have all the answers. And what I have learned is that the Bible has a lot of treasure for us. And we need to dig down into it, and we need to find out. Maybe you ought to get a concordance. Maybe you ought to get a commentary. Maybe you ought to get a word study book. Maybe you ought to get some devotional help so that you're not just casually reading across the Bible, but you're digging down for the treasures that are found in God's Word. And I believe that that will help you to be wise. That will give you more discernment. What we're talking about is discernment. What we're talking about is the skill or ability to make good decisions. And you know what? I have been in the ministry long enough and I've watched. There's a lot of people that are not making good decisions in their personal lives, in their families, in their churches. And we lack, we lack in this wisdom, the skillfulness of making good decisions. So Solomon tells us wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. So my exhortation to you tonight is get wisdom. Make it a priority in your life. Receive his word, request for his wisdom, and reach out for his wealth. And by God's grace, we would live in this world not as fools, but as wise, skillful at making good decisions. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Father, I pray tonight that you would do a work in our hearts. I don't know what is going on in people's lives, but I promise you, Lord, tonight, and I know tonight, Lord, that there are many people in this room that are facing issues in relationships and situations that are confusing. Maybe they're conflicted on what to do and what to say and how to handle it. Or maybe just in a general sense, we're not making good decisions in our lives. And your word tells us in, in these texts that we've seen that this skill or ability is the most important principal thing. And Lord, I pray that we would value it, we would know what it is, we would seek after it, and that we would be faithful students of your word, we would be in prayer asking for your wisdom, and that you would grant to us our requests, because God, we don't want to make foolish decisions, we want to be wise. We believe that if we become that kind of skillful person that You'll protect us and you'll bless us and you'll use us in this world. Lord, whatever you need to do in our hearts tonight, help us to just make a decision. Maybe we become lazy in the Bible with the word of God. Maybe we've been kind of complacent about the decisions that we've been making. Maybe we just need to beg you, God, give us help in some decision that we're making. Please change us by your grace tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand, please? Just heads bowed and eyes closed. Just before I turn it back to Pastor, I just want to uh, 
Katie to play one song, uh, one, one verse of a song on the piano. Just keep your heads bowed and eyes closed. And as she begins to play, just make a decision for the Lord. If you want to come and pray, you can do that as well. Would you just ask God to give you wisdom? Maybe, maybe a specific situation that you're facing. Just ask him right now to make you a skillful person. Skillful at making good decisions. Lord, thank you again for teaching us your ways, and we do beg you that you would help us. We are literally one decision away from ruining what you are trying to do in our lives. We're decisions, just a few decisions away from destroying our families. We're just a few decisions away of ruining our testimony and marring the name of Christ. God, we ask you in humility tonight that you would Help us to be skillful at making decisions in this, this life. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor, thank you. Blessing to be here tonight, isn't it? Oh, we rejoice in that. Well, I, my simple encouragement as I was listening to Brother Mark preach, um, don't neglect your daily devotions. That's, that's the starting point, really. That's not, that's not the only thing. But spend time. Did you spend time personally in the Word of God today striving to learn something? Uh, my personal devotions right now, I'm reading through the book of Exodus. Welcome to the tabernacle. And, you know, make this thing, this two cubits long. And it's like, what do I learn from that? Do you know that almost in every one of those passages, God always includes a spiritual note that it tells you why this is valuable. Uh, and it's rich. It's like, oh, that's important stuff. God wants his people separate. Or in those situations, God wants his people to walk with him. And there's all those. Anyways, that, that's wisdom. There it is. There it is. Um, and, then, and then do you pray for wisdom every day? Uh, it was early on in ministry, and it felt like, and there's a number of reasons for it, but it felt like every choice I was making was the stupid one. You ever been there? And I realized, okay, if I'm ever going to do anything for the Lord, I've got to get his wisdom. And so it became a part of my daily, my daily prayer life. It's on my prayer list. I pray for it every day to this day still. I will pray for it again tomorrow morning because in the morning, at least it's a fresh slate. I've got another chance of making a good choice again. <laughs> And so, Lord, would you give me wisdom for today? I, I need to apply your word to my life and my situation. Pray that way. That's, it's James 1.5, as he said. You, you lack wisdom? Well, ask of God. He gives to all men liberally. And I, personal testimony, there have been times where I've looked back. You, it's usually after the whole thing is done. It's like, oh, that was the wisest choice. And I, had, I knew it wasn't in my brain. It wasn't there for me. It was the Lord directing my steps at the time to make the right choice as you're begging for God for help. And then obviously in the midst of the decision, you know, you're going through the day, you make a decision, stop and pray, Lord help. As he, he mentioned that tonight, Lord help. That's getting wisdom. Uh, what you're doing here tonight is the right thing. You're receiving wisdom tonight. Apply it. Apply it, as he said. Well, praise the Lord. I'm sorry, I'm re-preaching your message, but that's, that's good stuff. So anyways, well, it's a joy to have the team here tonight.